Good morning, hello, and welcome everybody, or afternoon, depending on when and where you're watching this. Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV in Kalispell, Montana again, and pardon me, I'm getting just wickedly blinded by the light, so I gotta pull up my Sith cloak hood here, just so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, um, behind us is a, a 221 Transcendent model that I haven't had a chance to record before, but I've had a lot of requests for. Um, this has really become a very common, virtually like default, smaller, under 30 foot couples camping half ton towable floor plan. Um, but we're getting to look at it today in what I'm gonna call my nerd preferred way with the triple recliner Dynofa with free floating Dynofa table as compared to the standard U-Dinette that is normally in this thing. I don't have a problem with the U-Dinette. I could definitely see where it would benefit some folks, but um, when you have a TV directly across from a seating area like this, theater seat makes sense to me, especially when it's up high because it gives you the chance to recline. And I love those triple theater seats uh, because they can be cuddle compliant if you are so inclined. You can lay down and stretch out and relax and chillax on those things. Or you can have a little bit of separation of church and state between you and your loved one, depending on what the situation calls for. And when you don't do the dinette, when you get the, uh, the recliner set up, you get this free-floating, multi-height adjustable Dynofa table. It could be a coffee table. You could take it outside. It could be picnic time, uh, obviously dining. You could use it for extra countertop prep space, although I don't think you're going to need a lot of that in this one. It's also got a true queen bed, very nice uh, bathroom arrangement. I'll tell you though, you're going to lose the bedroom in transit in road mode. It's got um, a serviceable sur uh, solar package, heated underbelly, a um, bunch of other cool things here. Uh, we're going to get through the good, the bad, with everything in between. And I'd love to hear from you. What do you think of this one? Uh, and where do they nail it? Where do they fail it? God, you know, the thing nobody tells you about going bald is that your scalp gets frostbite while the rest of you is sweating. Now, one of the things here to consider is... Uh, this has become a very popular layout across different manufacturers. So, you know, if you watch this channel a lot or if you just check RVs out a lot, you're going to see a lot of versions of this, uh, which I think is kind of cool because what it means is that you don't have to settle for the floor plane that's just closest to the thing you want. You can actually get the thing you want. And, uh, you know, even here, like you have the choice between the u dinette and the, uh, the triple theater seat. And I love that it's a triple, not just a, a double theater seat. It really, to me, it, it opens up the living space a great, great deal. And uh, especially when you kick back and recline on the theater seat, because to be fair, that TV is up a little bit high. It really does kind of help soften that angle up. Although it's not a like a um, articulating TV mount, it can pivot left and right. It doesn't pivot up and down. I would probably change that mount, but that's screwdriver work. That's little pieces and parts I can get off Amazon. That's not something that's gonna really hold me up, but that's my personal journey and preference. Like everyone's got their own thing. Just because that's what works for me doesn't mean that's what has to work for you, you know? Now, the other nice thing uh, uh, about that uh, theater seat is that it's long enough that, you know, if Uncle Gary comes because Aunt Rita kicked him out, well, I mean, you know, you can just crash on the couch. Or if you want to take a daytime nap and snooze, you could do that. Probably more comfortable than a dinette ever dreamed of being would be my estimation there. Um, but, you know, different strokes, different folks. Everyone's got it. Some people really like a dinette, sit down, like do puzzles or something like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just everyone's a little bit different, you know. 12-volt compressor fridge over there uh, in the slide. And this is all pocket-screwed cabinetry. And I am walking, uh, in case you're wondering what that clunk sound was, I'm backing into the sliding bathroom door. Now, this kitchen has a ton of counter space. And recently here, I've had a lot of people suddenly start asking, why are they cutting away the countertop? And a lot of manufacturers are doing that. And I think it's for the benefit of making the RV just look and feel more open and not too boxy by the entryway. But that's just a theory. Would you do you like it how it is? Is it good enough, or would you rather it you know not have the little cutaway that you're looking at right there? I don't know. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, stainless farm sink, easy reach appliance outlets. But you may have noticed. This RV is lacking a little bit in the way of campsite window coverage. That's not something this layout tends to do exceptionally well. You will also notice it has a distinct lack of floor heating vents. The heat comes out the cabinet side ducting. And I got some early uh, report access. Like what we're looking at here is a 2023 model, which to be fair is almost identical to the 2022 generation. That was true of a lot of manufacturers. 
the 24s, I've seen some previews. The carpet's going away, folks. So if, uh, you know, you're looking for that ultimate pet-friendly kind of camping situation, that's, it's coming. It's coming. Uh, where do we want? Let's start up here and work our way down and, and uh, around. TV hookups off to the side because, once again, we have a sliding door across from the bedroom, which um, I've never seen a manufacturer mount a TV on the door, probably because the doors are just hollow and wouldn't support the weight, but that I feel like that could actually be kind of cool. Of course, you'd have to make sure you ran enough... Uh, like, you know, power outlets and, and, and wiring from the TV so that it didn't, you know, yank when you slid the thing open. Both sides of the bed have some household and USB plugs. Uh, above the bed here, kind of like you saw in the kitchen, you've got just a, a common vent. It's not a power fan, but this is not a laminated roof. So if you did want to piggyback some power off like that light over there on the right-hand side of the screen, it wouldn't be very difficult to do that at all. And for, you know... Uh, I, I think stick and hiddens get a bad rap, but they are a more budget-focused camper typically, and this is certainly one of those for, quote, just a stick and tin camper. Having the full hanging wardrobe space there and the dresser drawers is a nice find. Also, having a true queen bed with good walk-around space instead of having to decide between upgrading to a true queen from a camp queen or having good uh, walk-around uh, bed space. Like, they've given us both here. They've done and instead of or, and I like that. I like that I could just throw any mattress I want in there because, being real with you, the, the mattress from the factory, not much to write home about, really. Bedroom storage here. Again, you've got very symmetrical storage. Uh, dresser drawers and stuff on both sides. you got the hanging wardrobe towers on both sides. And um, the storage under the bed is easy lift, which is really nice. You don't have to heave that sucker. You may have wondered what's down inside that footlocker storage. That's the table, the Dinofa table, that we're going to see back here in the living area in just a second. I don't think I mentioned it, but that is a smart TV, uh, which is kind of a nice find. More and more manufacturers are going to those, which I'm a fan of. Um, the only regret I have about joining the cut the cord movement and getting away from cable and going to streaming is that I didn't do it sooner. That's... My only personal uh, regret and hang up there. Um, it doesn't have a slide side window there. Now, the opposite side of the slide out is a fridge, as you can see on the right hand side of the screen. So it's not like you get cross breeze, but uh, just uh, the, the views and the visibility I think would be nice. Although, um, I do like these, these double skylights that we have up here. Now, I mentioned that TV doesn't pivot down. And I hope you appreciate it again. We're sharing, you know, the good with the bad with everything here. But what is kind of nice, as you see here, that TV can pivot left, right a little bit, depending on what you're doing, which does mean, in case you were curious, it can be toilet TV certified. I do believe you could literally sit and watch TV on the can man in this camper. And that's, for some people, that's obviously a really big deal. <laughs> now, uh, you can see they rent with really maximized storage. Great space for a wastebasket there under the sink, which is nice. A uh, bonus drawer under that 12-volt compressor fridge as well. But notice that table. Have you, have you kind of caught on to how it's um, it's adjusting height as you go through? Uh, it has uh, like four height settings. You can use it down low like a little coffee table. Bring it up to table or desk level. And, and desk space in campers is becoming more and more important. And um, Or you could raise it up. actually slightly above the countertop level like if you need extra prep space i didn't actually display it in the full up position um but you, you could do that if you're so inclined i also think it's kind of funny i didn't intend for this but when you open just the middle theater seat it kind of looks like the sofa's flipping you off <laughs> I mean, just me I, I don't know it's also early I'm not caffeinated yet, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in that sort of foggy, slap-happy phase still. 
Um, around the corner over here, nice medicine cabinet, some open face storage over there beside the medicine cabinet. So like, if it was just a medicine cabinet there and nothing else, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't dislike it. And in my head, I'm almost thinking, I don't like open face storage, but they gave us more than less. So I don't think I want to knock them for that personally. What would you do with that space though? Would you, you know, throw your rubber duckies up there or something like that? Good counter space in here. The sink is admittedly a little small, but some really good counter space in there. And uh, in case you're curious, here's a little look at the storage that's going on under the countertop there. Now, as long as we're kind of staring at stuff, once again, the space around the toilet is fantastic. And thanks to the benefit of that pivoting television, you do have toilet TV certification in this floor plan. So if you're watching your favorite sports game and the Browns are going to the Super Bowl, you don't have to miss a thing like Steven Tyler, which is kind of handy. Um, open pocket linen storage over there on the left. It it's, it's tall and thin, so stuff will tend to stay in there, especially if it's just towels. The RV is six and a half foot tall. I'm a little over six foot tall. So my head's definitely in the skylight but they do a great job of giving us a big skylight. So that's not really a problem. I don't think I pointed it out earlier, but there is a set of household outlets kind of snuck over there between the slide out and the, uh, the bathroom wall. There's really, uh, I think one potentially major, uh, you know, hitch in the giddy up of this one for, for certain folks. And that is, we're gonna lose the bedroom in road mode because there's just no getting past this slide when it closes up. Um, now, just to kind of demonstrate, while the refrigerator doesn't open all the way, I, I think that opens enough. I can pretty easily get in there. And due to the way that the, the kitchen's orientated over here on the campsite of the RV with all of the drawers also against this wall, that means you can get to, well, frankly, all the kitchen storage. Some manufacturers will tend to put things like utensil drawers um, on the left side uh, of the countertop under the sink. And that can be a little bit of a problem when the slide closes. Now, by virtue of the fact that I can literally moonwalk my backside back here into the bathroom, I think that pretty clearly defines this as both snack and craptastic travel access. There is a little bit of a workaround for the bedroom. If what you're just trying to do is like hop in and out real quick or just like load stuff, pack stuff, this is a rack and pinion slide. And one of the benefits of that is that it can be deployed partially without screwing it up. Now it's not recommended you sit in, occupy and use the slide when it's in this position, nor do I recommend doing it in the rain. But if you're just trying to get up there to toss in a couple duffel bags or get out your dirty clothes, she can get her done. Now, the towing specs on this one should come through as generally half-ton towable, but again, that really varies based on, you know, where you're camping, where you're taking the RV. There's not a, uh, a one-size-fits-all descriptor that, that works for half-ton towable. Like, up here, we're at some pretty serious elevation. The air can be a little bit thinner, and it can get thinner in other areas of the country. And when you're going up and down pretty severe inclines, uh, that can that can really take a lot of extra work and effort. If you got a you know a, a mid duty half ton or something like that, it may not be what you want. Now around Flatland, Southern Michigan, where I'm from, yeah, all, all day long, a, a late model tow package half ton should yank this thing around pretty reliably. But please keep in mind. When we start talking towability factors like that, you should always check your specific vehicle's capacities individually against the trailer specs. Don't ever just go by a general description. I didn't get that awning fully closed. Okay, well, okay, never mind. Sorry, I just saw a, a squirrel moment there. Anyway, um, these have a good look to them. Um, they they really kind of uh, have a lot of very similar look to the their imagined sister that you see down there. But they've been able to accomplish that even on a tin skin camper, what's often referred to as a stick and tin with a wood skeleton as comp uh, compared to being a fully laminated product. I Overall, I think they've got a very attractive look to them. Now, you saw that uh, big front pass-through when we were taking a look at the docking center. There is a gas grill uh, cooker hooker over here on the side as we get down to take a look at the heated and enclosed uh, underbelly. Uh, there she is, up there in the corner there. It's easy to miss, actually. I've actually talked to a few transcend odors that don't realize it's there. Um, I don't know, ever, ever, evidently, they just never took a knee to figure it out. I'm not entirely sure, but that's it. That's not for me to say or judge. Uh, the speakers are up high. Um, you know, I gripe about that a lot. 
but it doesn't matter to me because I probably wouldn't use them anyway. But that's just me. Some folks really like speakers. By the way, have you been seeing an influx in campgrounds that literally just have a no music policy because they're tired of dealing with it? Has anyone else noticed that? Maybe that's just something I've noticed back home, but I feel like that's happening. Now, I recently got a chance to see some of the 2024 updates that are coming. Uh, I mentioned inside how the carpet's going away that will be going to a tankless on-demand water heater. But a lot of the major equipment and the features that you've seen uh, and really like Transcends for over the years are going to stick around. Like the little, you know, outside sprayer port, the little garden hose sprayer head so you can choose whether to do the mist or the, the shower or the jet. Jet was always my favorite, of course. Now, uh, that ladder over there, 250 pound rated, that will get you up to the walkable roof. And there is a uh, 165 watt solar panel up there. Now, this RV also has a, oh no, I, I wondered about that, I forgot. Grand Design goes a little bit above and beyond here. That's a 300 pound rated ladder, apologies. So, I'm sorry, what I was saying, 165 watt solar panel, but it has a 25 amp uh, controller. So if you want to probably throw another panel up there, chances are you should be able to accomplish that. And once again, I'm gonna have to join the dark side, but I've recently learned the dark side has cookies. I didn't, I didn't know, I was today years old. So maybe considering joining ranks, I'm not sure, either for the Republic or for the Empire, which one's for you. And in the meantime, I will leave you a link to check for availability on this RV in the video description, as well as a bunch of links to some similar floor plans from some different manufacturers. This has become a very common, popular floor plan, certainly, but every manufacturer is doing it a little bit differently. And I'd be kind of curious to hear, how do you think this one stacked up? Overall, uh, for a stick and tin camper, I think they absolutely nailed it. Um, I, I'd really have to boil down in the stick and tin world this or the Wildwood 22 RBS because I think they're really going to overlap and, and hit head to head pretty hard. But there's a world of laminated options for this too. So when you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone. Something, 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 dark side. Something, something, something complete.